Hi, welcome back to Dubai Real Estate Philosophy. My name is Ahmed and today we are on live location in Marjan Island. You can see we're standing right next to the beautiful beaches over here, the sandy beaches that most of the developments are going to have here in Marjan Island in Ras Al Khaimah. Where else can you buy at such low prices where you have direct access well most developments have direct access to the beach so we have done a video already about marjan island but i wanted to really come out here show you guys the live on foot boots on the ground to see what developments we have over here see what the status of the wind casino is what the status of all the other developments are as well now we're gonna go over to the park side as well we'll show you some views of the turquoise you know beautiful unpolluted waters you can see the color is i mean completely different than what you see in Dubai beaches because obviously we don't have hundreds of jet skis and yachts and all these things crossing over here it's very nice serene very picturesque very calm area so the residents of Dubai and obviously other areas in UAE come here for nice staycations and obviously the international traffic as well now we're gonna go over deep dive on those numbers in the presentation later on so stay tuned for that so we'll go to that side where the park is and we'll see the developments that they have over there today we are on location live in beautiful Marjan Island you guys can see behind me the gorgeous turquoise waters all the developments that are in front of us obviously we have the moving pig the rove the double tree by hilton and these are all the ones that we can see right now and behind me where i'm standing basically you can see uh, the little park area that they have we have some amazing food trucks over here for those of you who know salt burger is also here we have baskin robbins uh, amazing developments going on right and obviously in the b-roll you guys will see the wind casino the max shoreline going on mr obviously the address beachfront the address marjan island going on so a lot of developments coming here right and we get a lot of questions i've already done a video on uh, ras al khaimah marjan island but we never came on spot to show you guys uh, you know what the beauty of this island really is and it's serene i mean look at us right now obviously the winter season is about to start here in dubai tourists are going to start flocking here a bit behind this hotel there's babel bahar rixos hotel and uh, currently the hotel pricing is like 1400 dirhams a night right and these things when we talk about you know island style living the most important thing is supply right supply and demand obviously that's how the prices are dictated and obviously marjan island is restricted to a certain size i mean there's not it's not like we're going to make 10 marjan islands there's only one marjan island okay and obviously we have the wind casino coming up all these things coming up that are basically and we're going to go over some of the reports and stuff in the presentation later on in this video so stay tuned for that but in the end after it's all said and done you know wind casino is done they're expecting to have at least you know a requirement a demand of 20,000 rooms to fulfill the demand of the people who are going to come up and obviously that demand a lot of it is driven by wind casino these guys have invested even in airplanes they bought i believe 14 boeing planes that are going to come from international locations directly to ras al khaimah airport which is i believe you know 14 15 minute drive away from this island so you can imagine and obviously you know wind casino you know big brand with the guys who've seen it in macau las vegas you know all these areas they drive a lot of business they drive a lot of demand so it's a definitely a very important point but not only that this is an excellent place for people who want to have a staycation and all stuff and now i get this question all the time people are like you know and why do i want to come all the way out here i can invest in dubai look i always say it and i'm going to be very frank with people this isn't for everybody it's not like okay you're a first time investor in dubai and you just come you buy up marjan island this is for a bit more experience investor okay maybe you have a couple of properties in Dubai you've seen you've made some rental income you've made some capital appreciation and now you're looking to diversify a bit more this is an excellent option right and obviously if you just like the island lifestyle and the turquoise waters and you know all that stuff you can go for it as well obviously we won't stop you there as well so it's definitely something that's very unique about Marjan Island and again you know going over the data and all these things we'll look at the historical data and what are you know the future projections uh, of this island and why this is such a great investment but this is just to show you how gorgeous the waters are obviously these are not polluted at all it's not like you know we have thousands of jet skis running around we don't have yachts parked up over here well not yet anyway but you know until that happens uh, we have pristine uh, waters and all these things so it's definitely an excellent lifestyle obviously most people will not be buying to live here they'll be buying for investment and as we know even from the Dubai market Airbnb is allowed over here a lot of the developers actually what they're doing is that they're giving management by themselves so if you want to buy it from them you want them to manage your hotel bookings, short-term rental bookings we can do that 
as well. Let's show you a couple of the basically the B-roll of you know driving around. It's very excellently uh, developed. Obviously, all the projects that I mentioned are here as well. So let's look at some more footage. Then we'll go over the presentation and we'll look at some historical data. We'll look at why uh, you know this investment makes sense. Why there is going to be much more demand and why. At the end of all these developments, basically after all the plots are done, after all is said and done, the requirement expected is to be for 20,000 hotels and the supply that we're gonna have is going to be far less than that. So it's definitely something that's going to see some good capital appreciation, but main incentive obviously of this investment is going to be your rental income, your short-term rental income for sure. So stay tuned for the presentation. Uh, and we'll go over all those data. Okay, so now we are back in the office. We just saw the entire Marjan Island. I hope you guys like the scenery, the blue waters, the turquoise, untouched, serene waters that Marjan Island has to offer. So now we're gonna look a bit more into the historical data, what they were projecting and where we are right now. Obviously, we're close to the end of 2024 now, but we're gonna look at obviously the H1 performance, the first half of 2024 performance report to see if they are on track to fulfill the promises that basically the Ras al Khaimah government had made for the Marjan Island and see how the promises are adding up. We'll look at some historical data and again, why this is going to be an excellent investment opportunity for those who are looking to diversify from their Dubai portfolio or for the first time buyers who want to this kind of beachfront island style living residence which is of course no longer available in dubai because obviously island style living is very limited in supply so now this was the master plan of ras al khaimah marjan island now if you guys remember we showed you from two spots if you see the red arrow above this is basically where we were standing at the beach showing you guys the direct beach access and as you can see in the master plan there are going to be multiple beach accesses obviously not all of them are open right now a lot of them are still under construction and then when we went into the park side to show you guys the other side where they have the park that is basically that red arrow over here so just to give you a sense of scale and understanding of where we were standing for you guys to better understand the location of that in Marjan Island. Now, as you see, we've covered this in our earlier video as well. Marjan Island is split into four main parts. So we have Island 1 over here, then in the middle, this curve is Island 2, then we have Island 3, and then Island 4, obviously, and Island this side over here with the school circle and stuff, this red dot, as you can see over here, is going to be where the Wind Casino is coming. And obviously, you guys saw the construction right now. Construction is at full swing wing they are on target to deliver and hand over the entire project from the contractors in q1 of 2027 so we were boots on ground we saw the updates we saw the construction happening in all the projects not just obviously the wind casino we saw the address we saw Damak islands obviously the aldar project nikki beach uh, and all the other projects to follow as well so now let's look at a presentation by the ras al khaimah Tourism Development Authority, I believe, to see the historical data. Uh, so now this is basically a small presentation on the Ras Al Khaimah Island. We're just gonna see what they had. Now, again, most of people, they only consider Marjan Island in Ras Al Khaimah. A lot of people frequently forget that Ras Al Khaimah also has a very amazing mountain range. We have Jabal Jays and a lot of other activities as well. They have an amazing zip line and all these kind of fun activities that we're gonna look as well uh, that is available near Marjan Island. So again, you know, as I said, the diversity of the natural landscape, they have mountains, they have all these historical cultural places as well, along with Marjan Island. And these are all the things that are going to attract the tourism. I mean, Wind Casino is one side, we'll get to that in a minute, but this is just to go over the overall island as well. Again, and this is, you know, part of the roads as well, part of the, the landscape that they have. They have mountains, they got beaches, they got islands. I mean, you know, it really does have it all in Ras Al Khaimah. So globally connected, and again, as I said, it's very centrally located. Coming back to the Wind Casino part, as I mentioned, Wind Casino invested in 14 Boeing planes, and they are going to have 14 international destinations that are going to come directly into to Ras Al Khaimah International Airport. And that is going to allow easy access from around the world. So it is very strategically located as well, geographically 
very easy access, as you can see, four hours away from 31% of the world's population, representing 11% of global GDP. And if we look at some of the numbers, Wynn Casino in Las Vegas last year, just the Wynn Casino invited over 40 million visitors. So obviously Wynn Casino is a brand. They have people who are loyal to them. Those people, you know, people who enjoy the gambling part, who enjoy the resorts and all these things. Keep in mind, this is going to be the only beachfront, uh, beach access, island style casino by Wynn Resorts in the world. So this is definitely something that's new. They already have a lot of existing clientele and there's no doubt that there's going to be a huge inflow into this cool little island for a lot of things. And that is definitely going to help us in our returns on our investment. Talking a bit more about the unique things about Ras Al Khaimah, Again, as we can see the culture, uh, they have a lot of archeological sites as well. Findings dating back to 5,000 BC area has been continuously inhabited for 7,000 years. 18 historic forts, castles, and uh, towers. So a lot of things to, fun things for tourism to see. Obviously, as I mentioned, the mountains, Jabal Jays, the desert, you know, very beautiful red sand desert, and obviously the amazing coastline with the natural mangroves and stuff. And by the way, stay tuned for Sinia Island as well. There's a video coming on that very soon. We went, we saw the natural mangroves in Sydney Island, so stay tuned for that. But these are some of the things that Ras Al Khaimah has to offer today. Now, again, with the investment climate, a lot of people they hear about Dubai, Dubai, Dubai all the time. And one of the reasons Dubai is obviously very attractive is because of the you know low taxes, the investment security, we have regulations, the DLD regulations, all these things. It's a very stable market politically. They're very blessed to have a lot of political stability, obviously around the world right now. Geopolitics is very shaky to say the least. We're very fortunate to be in the part of the world where it's very stable. These guys have very good political relations with the rest of the world. So these are some of the things, again, political and economic stability, geographic advantage. Again, we saw we're only four hours away from majority of the world. Favorable business environment, again, low taxes. The government understands that we need to attract more people. We need to attract more businessmen. It's not like the European countries or in US or other parts of the world where you are basically punished, you are taxed, you are brought down by you know legislation and regulation, bogging you down, holding you down, making your business more inefficient. When you come to UAE, UAE government understands the more business friendly we are, the more people we attract, the more prosperity everyone has. We're more of a free market capitalist society over here. And that is part of the reason why we are so successful. And again, obviously modern infrastructure. We have excellent highways. We have the best schools in the world. We have the best hospitals in the world. King's College Hospital, London Hospital, American Hospital. All these guys are here. So the German Hospital, these are some of the brands. When it comes to schools, obviously we have Kent College, the British School, the American School, all these things. James Wellington, very famous around the world. So all these guys are here and they're here for a reason. Okay. Obviously these brands, they have invested tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions in their facilities here in the UAE. And obviously they have massive research and development teams that look at the forecast, the future potential where obviously they're associating their brand with. So that's definitely something to look forward for. We do have 100% foreign ownership, 0% corporate tax, 0% personal tax, 5% VAT of 2018. It is still, we're obviously in 2024, the end of it, and it is still at 5%. So again, and if you're in Dubai, you might have to pay a 9% corporate tax, but if you incorporate in Ras Al Khaimah, free zone, that also drops down to zero as well. These are some of the outlooks that the government has, you know, obviously based on historical data where we are you can see 200 percent of the economy of Ras Al Khaimah's growth the economy has increased that much in the past decade they are contributing three to four percent of the entire UAE's GDP so these are massive numbers for a relatively small city and again these are going to increase much more once we have the casino live once all is said and done we have all these tourism guys coming in as well and these are the details of as right now and you guys saw the island right now there's not a ton of development there's not but still with just the attractions that they have right now with all the fun activities they have around Ras Al Khaimah and in that general, in that area, we've already had 1.2, 1.12 million tourist visitors already. So now this is expected to obviously, once all the developments happen, once all these things happen, once the shift happens, once the casino comes, you can expect that to be much, much higher. And now I'm not gonna bore you with all the details. Obviously you guys can see all the details or you know, all the rooms that are under development, the hotel rooms. So it is definitely good to, you know, have a look at the data. This is obviously an old report as you can see 2016, 17, 19, and the target for 2030. Now this can be achieved even more. Obviously this report is a bit older when Win Casino and all these things was not basically planned out, but there's no doubt 
that that is definitely an easy number. Now, if in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, Wynn Casino managed to attract 40 million visitors a year, okay, now obviously a lot of them are going to be the local US population, but obviously they're gonna have a lot of international visitors as well. Again, Wynn Casino is not everywhere in the world. You know, there are a few places, Macau, you know, Vegas, a couple other locations. So there's no doubt that that same clientele, that same crowd is going to also visit Ras Al Khaimah you know, just to get a beach vibe, just to get the environment, enjoy the resorts and all these things. So three million is definitely very achievable. It's very practical. It's not something, you know, pie in the sky expectations or something like that. So that's definitely something that's doable. And obviously three million people coming in, there's a huge demand for the hotels, for the short term stays. And as we saw, the island is not that big. We can't keep on making islands. There's limited supply and obviously the demand is definitely there. So it's something that again, if you might not see a lot of capital appreciation as much as maybe Dubai, because obviously residential and all that stuff, but this is an excellent opportunity for people who want return on their investments in terms of short-term uh, rentals and long-term rentals. Now, this is basically the revenue per available room of the world. Actually, you can see the highest is Maldives. Then we have Sardinia. We have Seychelles, Cancun, Dubai, obviously, and Cannes in France. And right after that, we have Ras Al Khaimah, obviously. So we're, they're already doing pretty well. Again, without all these developments happening, they're pretty well laid out. They're actually still doing better than Marbella and uh, Ibiza in Spain, obviously. So that is something to behold already without all these things happening. So once you can imagine, once all these things happen, there's no doubt that they can easily climb up the ladders. And as the thing says, Compared to prime European leisure destinations, Ras Al Khaimah has performed on par with some of the world's most popular destinations. And this is, again, without all the development already happening. So this was basically their hotel pipeline. If we look at 2022, three, four, and five, this is basically the number of keys. Now this has increased much more. Obviously there are more developments. This number is now close to basically around 15 to 20,000 we can expect, but definitely, as you can see from time after time, again, from 22, 2022 to 2025, that is consistently rising. And again, as we always say in our videos the best time is to get in early because that is when you get the best prices there is no doubt in my mind that right now we are in uh, November of 2024 the first half of 2025 there will be no off-plan inventory available. Secondary market is going to boom. So in secondary markets, we all know you have to pay commissions, you gotta pay the fees, you gotta pay the transfer fees, you gotta go through all this hassle, which you don't have to go through if you buy off-plan from the developer. And not to mention in secondary markets, you have to pay upfront full prices. So this is the time when you need to get in, let the developer finance you, let them give you that payment plan. You don't need to pay any interest. You don't need to pay fees. You just pay the property price, the 4% DLD, and basically the two to 3,000 dirhams for your title deed fees. So this is, again, an excellent time where you can let the developer finance you, get low pricing. You don't have to pay any premiums because once these units are done, again, in my opinion, you know, most likely in the first half of 2025, then after that time, you're gonna have to go to the secondary market. And obviously the people who got in early, they're gonna be expecting at least two, three, 400,000, some luxury cases, maybe even 500,000 their homes as premium. So why not you make that premium, get in the market early, don't put all your cash up front, make the developer finance you by taking advantage of their payment plans right now. And there's a lot of options, right? So there are many developer categories, right? So there's a tier one, we're looking at 2,500 their homes per square foot, plus all the way up to 3,000, okay? And then if you wanna go a bit lower, you know, you can look at 2,000. 2,200 dirhams per square foot. And a lot of developers have different payment plans. So if you have the power to retain, you should always retain. But if you want a bit more less aggressive payment plan, there are obviously developers for those as well. And you can get in touch with me to know more about more of the development. So obviously we can understand what your requirements are, what your cash flow is, and then we can match a project with you. So you can get in the market early, get it from the developer rather than the secondary market and take advantage of all the premiums, the payment plan, so you have better cash flow. And then when we go to exit later on, or when you go to rent it out, you have not paid premiums, you have not paid commissions, all these unnecessary costs uh, that get involved in the secondary market. These are some of the developments that are already there. We saw this, the Rick's House, Babel, Bahar, uh, the Marjan Island Re uh, Resort, obviously the Pacific Development, this is where we're standing at the beach. So, uh, and obviously the Double Tree by Hilton, you can see this is a bit older uh, of a map picture, but now, as you guys saw in our video, you can see it is much more developed. There's a lot of greenery, there's a lot of trees, a lot more development. And these are just some of the hotel chains that we saw. We saw the move and pick, the address is obviously under construction. We saw the Rove, the Radisson, uh, you know, obviously Saudi German hospitals coming up. We already saw the Hamptons, a lot of high-end brands that are definitely coming. And again, look, these guys are investing hundreds of millions of dirhams in development costs. Aldar, you know, obviously did acquisitions of like $480 million. These guys 
are not crazy. They have massive amount of research and development teams. They go through all the feasibility reports, all the things. So if they are putting obviously their money in it, they understand the future potential. And you guys as investors, as people who want to make good return on investment, you want to diversify, this is definitely a no brainer option. And this is the time to get into Marjan Island. And this is again, just to show you the occupancy, we're looking at around 72% throughout the year. Now, obviously this goes up and down based on the in season and off season. And you can see it is on par with Palm Jumeirah, Dubai, which is one of the, obviously they're a much more higher, but obviously it's a much more luxurious area, a bit more mature market. So that's why it's not a good time now to invest in Palm Jumeirah because people who invested there early have already made their money. They have already made their premiums. They've already made their rental income. So anyways, we're gonna wrap up with all the facts and figures. Again, you guys can reach out for more information. In the beginning of the video, as I mentioned, it's not just the casino and all these things that are coming up. Ras Al Khaimah has a lot of other activities as well. So we got the Jabal Jais, which is basically the mountain range, gorgeous mountain range they have. They have hiking over there. They have viewing deck. Obviously they have zip lines, uh, this cool adventure park thing, Jabal Jais flight, no shortage when it comes to tourism. Ras Al Khaimah's Jabal Jais is the UAE's highest peak, standing at a majestic 1,934 meters. You can see these winding roads, gorgeous roads. They obviously have a lot of camps. As a matter of fact, Bear Grylls, yes, Bear Grylls, the survival expert, expedition dude, he has his own camp out there as well. So it's a pretty cool uh, experience to go and check out for yourself as well, along with all the tourists that are going to be coming in the future. Onto the stuff, as I mentioned, the human slingshot, these are some numbers. Again, I won't bore you with all the details. You guys can, you know, pause the video, see for yourself. You know, the canyoning park, obviously horse riding, stable, you know, a lot of that, the mangrove adventure park. Oh, by the way, this is near the Sinia Island and we actually have a video there boating ourselves live boots on the ground and that's going to be coming soon as well so stay tuned for that video as well aviation hub by the way close to the Ras Al Khaimah Marjan Island they also have a small airport they have you know all these small planes you know gyrocopters all these things so again endless opportunities for tourists to have fun these are some concepts that they do have pop-up hotel concept a lot of this stuff is ready not necessarily this glamping style but they do have some fun huts and stuff that are already there so this was basically just a complete tour and guide of basically Ras Al Khaimah we went there on location showed you guys the water the developments over there talked about some historical data some of the apartments uh, and developments that are coming up from all these top tier developers obviously Damak, Imar, Ellington these guys are no small companies that come to mind these are obviously all top tier one developers so if you guys have any questions feel free to let me know in the comments below you can feel free to reach out on my number at the top right corner for any queries you may have and again this is at the starting stage of something that's going to become very grand very amazing and you don't want to miss out on this opportunity especially with all the heavy hitter names that are behind this we have the uae government we have win casino obviously the ras al khaimah government these numbers the numbers make sense unfortunately the world is facing a lot of geopolitical problems and dubai you know and obviously the uae in general is a safe haven for those people parking their money tax-free having that security that stability all the infrastructure that we have amazing internet speeds best schools hospital services all these things that you want one of the best police forces in the world obviously the municipality is very strong as well very well managed especially after the 2008 financial crisis very well regulated as well so thank you so much for watching this video if you guys have any questions feel free to let me know stay tuned for the Sinia island video that's coming up very soon where we go into the mangroves on the boat live in action to see what Sinia island is all about coming up from shoba one of my favorite developers as well so thank you so much for watching this video i'll see you guys in the next one goodbye for now